Hi and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, something a little bit different. This is a Q&A session. About two or three weeks ago, I sent out a few messages asking if anybody wanted to ask any questions or just send in their opinions or, or whatever so we can just discuss a few subjects and things like that. Well, as always, uh, things roll on and being manically busy, um, I finally got a little bit of a window, so I thought, hey, it'd be a bit of a fun to read back some of your questions, have a little bit of a chat, and, uh, and then uh, get some comments back from you guys. So, let's start. Well, I collected all, up all the questions and I printed them out. Then I had a quick look through and I made a few notes and things like that. So, let's start with Jackie D. If you could only have two RC cars in your collection, which ones would they be? Now, if you can only have two cars, I mean, it's tricky, there's a lot of cars out there, but if you can only have two, then really I would probably go with ones that I would definitely love driving. Two cars that, because um, you, you, know, you can't really have shelf queens if you're only allowed to have two cars. So my two cars that I would actually um, choose might surprise you. First car I'd probably go with would be this. Now, I don't know if a lot of you know what this car is. This is a Schumacher K1 Aero. This is my, that's supposed to be on there, but it's just running this at the moment. Um, this is one of my dailies. This car gets no love whatsoever. It runs brushless, it goes like the clappers, and drives amazingly well. This is a fantastic buggy for blasting all over the place, and it's pin sharp when you're driving it. Um, it does exactly what you tell it to do very, very well. So that would be my first one, because this is great. You get it out, you throw it down, you put your saddle packs in it, and off you go. It's as simple as that. And that's what I love that car for, even though it gets absolutely abused constantly. My second one would probably be uh, this monster. This is my Traxxas TRX4. This is my yin to that yang. This is a road beast or rough light terrain. This is a crawler basher, go anywhere truck. So between the two, I can drive this on the beach. I could take this for a forest. I can go crawling. I can go donuts. I can do all kinds of crazy things in this one. And then if I want some precision driving, this is the car for me. So if I had to only have two, these would probably be my two. Now you're probably thinking, oh my God, well, why have you got so many Tamiyas? That's because if you've got more choice and you've got more options, there's a lot of cars here that I, I will never drive and I love them for what they are. But to fit in with everything that I do, um, yeah, it has to be these two for that. So that's the answer. I hope that's um, what uh, you're asking for, uh, Jackie D. And I guess the answer was probably a little bit different to what a lot of you have thought. So if you could pick two cars that you could only own, which two would they be? All right, let's put them back. <sighs> right, the next question. Charles Wall, he asks, if you could build a modern Tamiya uh, to eliminate the uh, limitless speed runs and in claim to fame, what do you envision as Tamiya supercar? I wish someone else would throw their hat in the ring toe to toe. So this is in regard to the horrendously fast limitless um, car that came out that out of the box is insanely fast. Um, could Tamiya do it? Yeah, of course they could. Do they want to do it? Ah, that I don't know. Um, what would it be like from a design point of view? Well, if you're gonna go fast, then the law of aerodynamics and speed apply. So when, you, when you're trying to make an all out bullet, then you tend to end up going in the same direction as a lot of other cars. So would it be radically different to the Limitless? No, probably not. It would be nice to think that Tamiya would put a sprinkle of uh, cool design on it. Um, 
but if you're going flat out then you're going to work more towards uh, efficiency of speed downforce and things like that so it may even come out looking kind of the same would i be interested in a car like that personally no uh in the uk trying to find places that are super smooth and super long with no cars on it's very difficult very difficult i mean we have like tennis courts i guess or some large parks but if you're running at those speeds you need to have no one around and i can't really think of anywhere that i could run it safely so it's something that looks amazing and it's great to watch on youtube with people who've got massively long straight roads with no one on it in america where space is is ample space everywhere but for for me probably not uh, what else have we got? Uh, Jano or Jamo? I think it's Jano. Sorry, I printed them out. Are you planning on getting the new Tamiya CCO2? The answer is yes, I am. Uh, the Benz G Wagon that's due out. Yes, I'm waiting for the acknowledgement where I can buy one, and I will be adding one to the channel. It looks really cool and really interesting. Also, I'm a bit of a Benz fan. Um, I've had quite a few Benz over the years and my family like Benz as well. Um, we've never had a G-Wagon though, a real one. Um, so yeah, definitely. And uh, it'd be really interesting to show it on the channel as well as I'm hoping I can use it um, towards what I do with my TRX4. So I'm hoping it's gonna be capable as well as looking awesome. Um, one thing the TRX4 doesn't do is it doesn't look that awesome which is why I've got like a runner body on it. It's not exactly pretty, um, whereas that is stunning. So watch this space. When I get my hands on one, then uh, definitely. Darren Grimmer writes, you have covered the issues of why Tamiya are not really releasing some of the old classics that clearly everyone wants. Putting that to one side, do you think then they should release some completely new models to interest us? 100% yes. It's not always about looking back and going, oh, I wish I had a boomerang, oh, I wish I... Those cars were new once, and I think Tamiya needs to regain that. Um, bringing out cars of real cars is one thing, but coming up with new, interesting uh, designs that are different, not necessarily better on a track, but different, and with character and personality, which a lot of the old classics had. So I don't know whether Tamiya can actually compete with a lot of the other brands for out and out best RC cars, but by going down the character route, bringing out new character cars, that uh, that could be a real niche um, for, for Tamiya. So yes, I would love to see some like real new iconic cars coming out. Obviously when you bring out a car, it doesn't be, it's not instantly iconic, it takes time. But if you add some real character to a car, um, yeah, yeah, that would be, uh, that would be so cool. Um, Ian Ellison wrote, how about a short video on restoration techniques? Easy available products or suppliers that subscribe use and trust that subscribers use and trust. For example, glues, paints, and things like that. Well, the problem is, sorry, cup of tea. The problem is, is my channel is I basically show what I'm doing with my cars and I kind of show the steps that I go through and things like that, but I'm no expert. Just because I have a YouTube channel doesn't mean I have 400 years worth of experience and I know better how to set up cars and I know racing and da 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 and what gear ratios and what motors. And so I try to steer away from it a little bit that I, I you know, uh, that I'm saying, this is the best motor for this car and things like that, because I don't really know. And I'm, I'm not overly interested in forcing my opinions um too much down people's throats on which is better with what and stuff like that it's for you guys to make your own minds up and as long as it makes you happy and you get enjoyment out of your cars who, who really cares whether you run xyz or whatever um so i'm that's not really my channel um i am doing i'm doing a um servo uh, comparison video at the moment 
but basically all I'll do is I'll run my own tests and I'll, I will give my own findings um, you know and it's for people to decide whether that data is valid um, you know from that point of view and then they decide whether they want to go down that route or not um, so I, I it's a difficult one because obviously as you're showing what I'm doing I am kind of saying this is how I do it so you know to influence other people that they should do it the same way but you should always everyone's an expert so you have to take everyone with a pinch of salt including my my uh, things I say anyway babbling on <clears throat> so Paul Gonzalez will you add other RC cars that you like besides Tamiya TRX4 Sport is awesome. Maybe you can put kits on other car brands together. Get everyone to vote on a new build. Make a track in your garden. So there's a, there's a few things in here. So we'll break it down a little bit. Will you add other RC cars that you like besides Tamiya and TRX4 Sports? Yes, definitely. Um, obviously, I have some Schumacher cars and I also have a Schumacher Cat XL. XLS, I forgot what it's called then. XLS that is desperately waiting to be built. And the car that I really want at the moment, I really, really want it and I keep getting close to buying it and then I buy other stuff, <clears throat> is the uh, Kyosho Turbo Optima. I really like that wee wee car. Um, it's not the cheapest car in the world. So uh, I go to buy that and then I end up spending money on other things and then it makes it even more expensive but at some point I will pick up one of those before they fizzle out and then I can't get one. So one thing that uh, I'm currently waiting to do, so I've got it out so I'll show you, is I have my Traxxas, Traxxas TRX4 and I have another body for it. And I went to um, get some additional stickers for it from um, MCR Racing and I scaled them up because this is supposed to be one tenth, but it's not. Um, so I scaled these up a little bit and then I'm going to make this into a Toyota uh, Tamiya truck. So all these bits and pieces are now at the right scale. So I'm gonna spray it white and it's gonna become a Toyota truck. So it's gonna look like a Tamiya truck, but it's gonna be running as a Traxxas. So that'll come, that's quite an easy build. All I've gotta do is mask out the windows uh, spray it white, put the stickers on. So that's a nice easy one. So that'll be coming at some point soon. So uh, just a bit of fun and uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, will I put a track in my garden? Yes, the wife would love that. Yeah, I can see her going, yes, you can dig up the garden and put a crawler track in if you want. And then I could get a few tons of rock delivered. Uh, also I can, uh, Put out a clay track in the garden and she wouldn't have any problems with that at all um so yeah that's a no that's a complete no i've actually got a couple of jumps and some cones that i put out in the garden sometimes if i want to blast around to practice um, precision driving more than just zooming up and down uh, that's about as far as that one goes um, I actually live in the sort of out in the countryside a little bit so we've got some big dirt farm roads and things like that i can use but a track in the house, uh, yeah, probably not, no. <laughs> uh, Hardy or H4 RDY says, what car for you that you don't own is the Holy Grail? And is there one, uh, it, uh, and if there is one, will you try to get one and are you trying? So I thought about this for a while because uh, it's very easy to jump and say, oh, the Holy Grail is a blazing blazer. But it's very easy to get seduced into the blazing blazer because it's so expensive and it's, it's very, very sought after. But do I really want one or do I want one because everybody wants one and it's expensive? And when I stop and think like that, no, not really. Would I like one? Oh yeah, it'd be lovely to have one on the side, but do I really want one? Not really. Um, so putting that seduction of having something that someone else can't afford or doesn't have aside, 
no I don't really want to spend that kind of money on a blazing blazer and I think part of the my personal opinion don't know how true it is but I think the blazing blazer is very desirable because when the car came out no one really bought it because no one really understood it or liked it outside America so that's why there's not many of them which probably makes it more desirable am I right am I wrong put in the comments below is that the reason why that car is so much higher than everyone else or was it the kit was very expensive at the beginning I, I don't know so what's my holy grail well i kind of got them one i've really wanted for a long long time which i only just got my hands on was the 1988 avanti the original one and i was lucky enough to get an early one uh, i'd like to say that was skill but i had no no clue um, so I was lucky enough to pick up that one and it turns out to be an early one. So that was one of the cars I really wanted to get was an 88 Avanti. Um, it needs restoration, but it's complete and uh, it's not in too bad condition. Um, also, another one of my Holy Grail cars was the 959, the Porsche 959 up here. That was a car that I, I remember when I was a child thinking there's no way in the world I'm ever going to get that. It was just so expensive and it was so complicated and it was outside of my technical range back then anyway so um so it was lovely to get one and oh my god does that car make you work for it if uh, if you're thinking about getting one of those yeah prepare yourself they're not the easiest car to fix parts are insanely expensive bodies difficult to paint and parts are really hard to get hold of but it's a fantastic car but i wish i could drive it i can't i've driven it inside the house but I can't drive that outside. It's too valuable, it's too fragile, which is why I want a re re so I can drive it because apparently it goes like the clappers with the Technigold motor in it. And uh, it's supposed to be brilliant fun to drive. So hopefully, whether we will or not, it's a big debate that's been covered over and over again on this channel and a few other channels. Um, I hope we see it uh, re read Whether we do or not, probably a long shot. But I would love to get a new one so I can drive it, I really would. And I think there's a lot of people that would also feel the same way. And the last one, which is the one I don't have, which I've mentioned before, is the Kyosho Turbo Optima. That's probably my, my, my like, oh, I really want to get that car. That's kind of where I'm at right now with that car. And I keep coming back to it, which is a good sign because it means it's not just a fad. I've probably wanted that car now for about four or five months but I keep getting distracted and buying other cars for the channel and things like that and that, that pop up where that one's just sitting there waiting to buy a brand new. So there we go. Right, one from Glenn from Tamiya Legends. Um, I've talked to him about this one, so uh, it was quite a good question. So he's asked me again, uh, how do you see your channel going in the future? So at the moment, because I'm limited by time, I try to stick to sort of mainstream stuff, building cars and spraying bodies and things like that, the odd running video. But hopefully as the channel grows, I can then invest more and more time in the channel. I will be able to start doing lots more um, scratch built stuff. Uh, further down the line, I want to get a 3D printer and I want to start designing chassis and then taking gearboxes and actually building scratch built cars and things like that and really going down that road um, more. But it just takes up so much time. Also, I'm kind of limited on space, so having 3D printers and things like that, I can't really do right now. But down the line, as well as getting more into um, sort of helicopters, planes, all that kind of stuff is uh, really interesting to me as well. Making carbon fiber parts, uh, des designing little parts for uh, hop ups for cars, all this sort of stuff is more me, but just takes more of an investment in time. So that's kind of where I see it going. Um, I want to move out of this studio. I've optimized the studio now, but it's still quite a small room. So I'm gonna to need to expand at some point. Um, I'd like to, if the channel ever gets anywhere near making enough money to rent a little unit, that I will move it into a unit so that I can have a much bigger studio and then I can have my 3D printers and then do uh, that kind of stuff. If you take it to its natural conclusion, what I'd love to do eventually is have a warehouse where I have a studio at one end with a big glass wall and then put a track in behind it and then open the track up so that anyone can come and use it and basically charge them as little as possible. 
um, if I could get the channel to the point where the channel subsidizes the track so that people can just come and use it and I can meet and people can get together and have a central location. I'm actually on the A1 in Bedfordshire. So I'm quite central from London and sort of, you know, North London and around. So getting here is actually quite easy. So it'd be really nice to dream of one day getting a, a place where I could have a, a crawler track and a proper race track and not be worried about running it just by charging out for track time. Because a lot of these tracks don't make much money and they struggle, whereas if I had a channel that was big enough, it could fund it and then people could come and just have a, a blast with it. So that's kind of my vision of where I'd like to go with it. But hey, one step at a time each day as it comes really. Um, from that point of view, uh, what else have we got? So, uh, hey dad, uh, hey dad RC. Amazing how fast your channel has grown. Would love to know what you attribute your uh, meteoric rise to. Well, I think that's a that's a bit strong, but um, the channel is doing okay. We always want to grow faster and things like that. And you guys probably don't realise that in the background there's a lot of work that goes on editing footage and things like that as well as holding down a full-time job children family all that kind of thing so um what would i say of why i've got to i, I do do a bit of advertising now and again but it's very expensive so uh you have to limit yourself on that side of it and keep plugging away really uh, i do a lot of facebook stuff i try to post quite a bit on facebook i have my instagram channel um page or whatever you want to call it um and then facebook facebook's doing quite well i'm up to about 650 people on facebook so it, it you know it's slow growth and you have to put effort in continually all the time and try and improve things um don't just end up sitting in one spot you have to kind of go well how can i improve how can i improve that's kind of it i've got a long way to go and the channel's only six and a half seven months old now um i had planned originally when i started um to get to christmas and have a thousand subscribers and hit my four thousand hours but it's looking now that i'll probably do double the hours and probably two and a half thousand subscribers so you know you've got to look back and you know pat yourself on the back sometimes and yes we'd all like to have 50,000 subscribers but uh, for where I am I'm quite happy for the amount of time I, I put into it um, yeah it's okay um, a lot of people think that YouTube is uh, you can make an absolute fortune on it and this is true when your channel is massive but for the small channels like mine and for people that are under a hundred thousand subscribers we do it more for love than we do it for the money um, I probably spend a month's worth of what I make on YouTube in one day on a set of set of wheels. So, you know, we, we don't really do it um, to make lots and lots of money. I could go and work in a supermarket for one day compared to what I earn in one month doing YouTube. And there's hundreds of hours and hours of footage and editing and cost and things like that. But, uh, you know, we'll have to start somewhere and the channel's mine and I'm the boss and the CEO and the MD, or whatever you want to call it. So that's a lovely feeling as well. And then the more effort you put in, the more rewards you get. And I get to interact with a lot of cool people as well, which is brilliant. The interaction is a massive part of that for me, that I love people to comment and put lots of, you know, information about themselves and what they're doing and, and kits that they're working on and sending me pictures and I've made lots of contacts and, and things like that. So that is a massive chunk of it. Uh, sorry, anyway, uh, time's rushing on so we better move a bit faster. Uh, unknown video, uh, what was your very first hobby grade RC car? Uh, how much was it? Did you get it brand new? Um, first ever car was a grasshopper and I actually raced that. <laughs> I used to race it. I was I was quite young and I used to take it racing. Um, yeah, I was, wasn't was exactly in the high classes, but I had a great fun with it and it was brilliant. It never broke. Um, I used to just put a battery in it, blast around, take a battery out, charge it 
and that was it. My friend at the time had a original um, Schumacher XLS that I read. He was a few years older than me. So he had that and I had a grasshopper. And I just remember looking at his XLS and I was like, wow, that's amazing with the spring back uh, front arms and everything. And it was so sophisticated and bonkers fast back then versus my grasshopper. And then uh, I stopped racing and then I got myself a Falcon. And then the Falcon was just blasting up and down the street and jumping off the curbs and stuff right up to the point where I broke it twice or three times. And then it basically got relegated to the loft where it's vanished into the ether of time. Hence why I now have three of them. Um, so that's the cars. And yes, I bought them all brand new from BT's in Ealing Broadway, which is in West London. Uh, I remember going in there and they had the TV in the corner and it was playing all the videos from Tamiya and then they had all the cars and uh, boxes and the 959 and all that. I was like, wow, and I had the bag from BTs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was, that was amazing. Uh, where else did we get to? Uh, <laughs> Charlie Bentley won. What does your wife think of all your Tamiya kits? Uh, tolerance, I think, is the, uh, the the best word I can sum that up for. Um, believe it or not, my wife is a bit of a petrol head. So she has a big hankering for old vintage Porsches. Uh, sort of 80s, late 70s, early 80s Porsches. So we've we've always wanted to get some uh, um, Porsches. And uh, this week I actually bought her a, a TTO2 Porsche 911 uh, kit for an upcoming video that I'm going to do where I bought two of them so that uh, my wife and I are going to build them on the channel so she's going to build an old 911 and then I'm going to go through it with her and she's going to I'll build one and she'll build one and then we'll do the bodies and we'll do one in this box art silver and one in the box art white and uh, she said she would do that so my wife will be on the channel soon to do a build video um, from that final sort of thing so there you go it's a bit of a bit of a scoop of what's coming on to RC Kicks. And two, why is the Avanti 2001 called 2001 when it was made in 1990? I have no idea. I have no idea at all. If you know, put comments below. Apart from the anything I can think of, is it sound futuristic? Um, obviously the 2001 came out to try and rectify a few of the problems of the ATA after the egress and it took the longer chassis and it was cheaper and it, uh, um, things like that and it was more to you know for, for racing and things like that but as to the I have no idea no idea so comment below if you know why it's called 2001 uh, apart from it sounded futuristic when they brought it out <laughs> your guess is as good as mine gazfish66 good name I would like to know if your wife asks you your dreaded question how much did your new toy car cost you which is how my wife says it should be a i can't remember offhand b not as much as you think c just look all dazed and confused saying nothing till she leaves the room shaking her head it's always got to be c you've just got to go um, and then eventually they leave so c go with c or you can go D. I've had that for ages. That's the, the generic one when it comes to things like shoes, handbags, clothes, and that kind of stuff. Um, luckily, my wife's not really crazy on handbags and shoes and stuff, so I, I dodged that bullet in return. Anyway, I digress. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Viper76. Uh, what has made you stick with RC, and do you think you'll still be in the hobby if Tamiya wasn't around? Um, I don't know because I got back into the hobby not that long ago and it was based on um, looking for a car for my son for Christmas and I thought that might be a good idea to get him off his iPad and his games and actually make something and, and paint and things like that and then I obviously fell into the nostalgic trap and realized there's lots of re-rees and all this kind of stuff and that's kind of where I got back into it which is then how I discovered all the Traxxas and other cars and things like that. So I don't know if Tamiya just vanished into the, the distant memory and, and didn't make cars anymore. I honestly don't know. 
a friend of mine is a uh, he was a big fan on helicopters so he used to be and he used to do a lot of racing as well with cars but i never really got into it back then um he's all given that all up now so uh i don't really know that's a good question um so there we go then i've got jason uh from facebook he says if you could own any rc buggy that you have uh, ever been released by a company what would it be uh, and for what reason so what would i like if you could own any rc buggy that has ever been released by any company what would it be um there's, there's cars there's cars that, are, that don't exist that i wish did exist um so it's a little bit different to kind of what what the question is from jason but there's an Avanti 2 and uh, personally I mean I've never seen one in real life and I've never you know I've never driven it or anything like that and I'm sure some people have got it and they love it but to me it was a cheap knockoff chassis knockoff it was a cheap chassis that I don't feel deserved the name you know, if you look through the history, you've got the ATA, and then you've got the 2001, and then you've got the, where are they, two, you know, 2011, and then you've got the black, which I don't have yet. I would have loved to have seen them take the Avanti and make an Avanti 2 to the same engineering level. Modern, but just pushing the boundaries of composite materials, some forged carbon in there, you know, um push the boat out a little bit and really yeah high-end uh kit you know not necessarily for racing but just to really push the avanti legend forward a bit more because the first one was that attempt to make the best racing buggy and the engineering what i love about the avanti is the engineering um yes the steering's rubbish early on and stuff like that and if anything the um egress is a much better car but it's just stunning from an engineering point of view so i'd love to have seen that care and attention to detail on an avanti 2 whereas i think the actual avanti 2 doesn't really do it for me but if you've got one and you love it that's great that you know but that's just what i could wish for so jason i haven't really answered your question but uh i kind of hope that <laughs> that covered it right we're almost there um david says i can't get enough tammy i love the channel and i would like you to stick to vintage and reread gives me hope and i might get a vintage someday definitely get yourself a car and there's lots of people that are like oh i'd love to get into this and i'd love to get a car again and you know it brings back memories and stuff now obviously you know they're not the cheapest thing in the world but if you can pick up a old one and then restore it slowly and you know um highly recommend it and if you do send me some photos at gavin evans at rckicks.com uh i love to see photos of people that are actually restoring and building and getting into their cars as well um, and if i get enough then i will do a whole sort of uh video on it of people showing me their projects and stuff like that as it's pretty epic and i'd love to see what other people are doing um two of my favorite channels okay so we've got uh michael michael thomas and he says can you move your monitor so you don't look to your right when you zoom in to the car <laughs> right so basically this camera that you're talking to me on i have a feed over here and i can see what's coming from the camera and uh when the studio was around the other way i had it over to this side so when i bring up something to show the camera i can look over here and see that like this is one end and this is another end for my framing and things like that now i've moved it to an even worse position so uh, sorry about it, michael uh, it's now right up here which is even worse i do need to move it because it's in an even worse position and it needs to be down here underneath this one i will do that at some point so uh, yes i'm ever so sorry about that right um gary wilson we're almost there uh, will there ever be model shops like there used to be and then he goes on about the shops in Glasgow and stuff like that. Now, this is a worrying aspect of RC with, with the likes of iPads. And people seem to have lost a lot of the skills involved in painting and 
cutting out and then DIY and and being that way um, obviously it's a broad statement and it doesn't count for everyone but people like instant gratification these days versus spending time doing things so yeah I think the psyche of younger people has changed which impacts it not all of them obviously I'm sure there's loads of youngsters out there that can spend hours and hours but in general so yeah I do think the heyday has maybe gone from the model shop obviously it's a real hard business to to, to open a model shop now you gotta be brave and hopefully a lot of it comes from internet sales more than anything um, at least you can still get stuff off the internet but uh, I think we all kind of miss the going down to the model shop and looking around and things like that but everybody wants a bargain these days because things are so expensive so to actually go down to a shop and spend more than what you get it on the internet or you go down find what you want come back and buy it online so retail is having a hard time, especially things like model shops and stuff. And I actually haven't been into a model shop for donkey's years. I just do all my stuff online, unfortunately. Well, that's pretty much it. So I've rambled on. I'm not quite sure how long this video is. It's probably about 40 minutes. So if you sat down to listen to me ranting on and you're still at the end, thanks very much. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Please like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.